Um, so this evening I will be speaking to you about Zambia, um, which is one of my very favourite countries in Central Southern Africa. Um, I am actually Nature Trek's tailor-made manager, but we do offer holidays to Zambia as well as all over the world. Um, and this evening I will be predominantly talking to you about the South Luangwa National Park, which is the main one that we feature on our group holidays. Um, but we do, we can do extensions to any of the other national parks or we could organise tailor-made holidays if you prefer. So Zambia is actually covered in 20 national parks. It covers a third of the area, so it's very, very well protected. And, um, oh, sorry, this has not gone well. Um, there you go. Hopefully you can see that again there. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, and, oh, wrong way. going well. So sorry. Right, there we go. So as you can see, it's positioned here in central southern Africa. Um, we've got borders to Botswana, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Tanzania. Um, so it's really in the heart of that safari district. Um, and we can organise extensions to any of those areas as well. So this is South Luangwa. Um, it's uh, named for the Luangwa River that flows all the way through it. Uh, as you can see here, this is the, the dry season when the river is completely dried um, but it is um, on a, a, a floodplain which is completely flat so during the green season the, um, the it, it completely floods the area bringing lots of sort of fertile silt and soil um, and then that um, pr provides the opportunity for plenty of plants and um, just a, a huge biodiversity a huge abundance of wildlife and it really is a premier game reserve in in Zambia. So elephants are widely abundant throughout South Luangra. Um, they're slightly smaller than the elephants that we might find in Botswana or um, elsewhere in, in Southern Africa, um, but they're sort of naturally migratory. So towards the dry season, they do tend to come down to the rivers um, and we'll see them very regularly. Hippos are also hugely abundant in South Luangra. Um, probably more here than almost any other park in southern Africa um, and particularly during the dry season um, when the water sources um, become smaller and smaller they get concentrated into these very small areas and you get literally hundreds um, and they're bellowing and fighting um, and it really is very dramatic indeed. But one of my very favourite reasons of visiting South Luangra is for the southern carmine bee eaters now these come every year between around August and November. Um, they nest in the banks of the dry river banks of the Luangwa River and their nest holes can uh, be about two metres deep. So they very, are very complex systems. But why they're so spectacular is the sheer abundance that they come in um, during this season. And the, the colours that we get, the, the crimsons, the blues, um, it, it really is a spectacular sight. So again, with, um, with the river, most of the lodges that we find in South Luangra are located on the riverbanks. This is uh, Kafunta River Lodge, which we've used for over 20 years now. Um, very comfortable, very well decorated. Um, but most importantly, you can see here that it's got these wonderful verandas that are right on the, um, the river. So when we're here during the heat of the day, during our downtime, we can still enjoy lots of wonderful wildlife spectacles right from our own doorstep. I've included this aside because this is something that you won't see in South Luangwa. Um, so it, there won't be any of these sort of crowded jeeps, which can be um, yeah, sort of quite upsetting to see for both the wildlife and environmentally. Um, this is more the, the kind of uh, scene that we're likely to see here. So there are open sided safari vehicles from um, all of the lodges in South Luangwa. So fantastic for photography. Um, they, there are also no tarmac roads in South Luangwa, which again is, is lovely for photography and really gives it a really wild feel. So generally in a day, uh, we will go out first thing in the morning. We'll spend about three hours out on safari just after first light. And then we'll come back for this lovely uh, brunch. They, they tend to be very substantial brunches. Um, and yeah, one of the things that I absolutely love about Luangra is how incredible the food is. Considering that we're in such a remote environment, uh, the food really is unlike anywhere else I've stayed really. 
Then during the heat of the day, you can experience some downtime, um, say relaxing from your from your chalet or tent, um, or a lot of the lodges actually have these uh, these hides where where you can spend a few hours. So you can literally be out looking for wildlife all day if you like to. Then at around four o'clock, we will head out on an afternoon game drive. Um, so we'll go out for about two hours and then around six o'clock, we'll get to experience one of these really wonderful African sunsets like nowhere else in the world. It's all very civilized. We'll have a gin and tonic or a glass of wine uh, and just relax for a few minutes and just enjoy the, the sounds of the bush as we watch the sun go down. But then again, one of the best things about South Luangwa is that we can continue our game drives right into the evening. And so we can do some nighttime spotlighting for nocturnal mammals, such as this Cape porcupine. Um, we could see honey badger. Uh, we might see spotted genets or civets or plenty of mongooses um, or even perhaps this lesser galago. We'll also see species that we might see during the daytime, but a lot of these are actually much more active at nighttime. So we might be lucky enough to witness a fresh kill like we've seen here from this leopard. Leopards are also very um, easy to see during the day. Uh, it's probably easier to see a leopard in South Luangwa than it is anywhere else in the world. Um, they are hugely abundant in the reserve. And um, we, you, you'd probably be pretty lucky pretty unlucky not to see one. Um, they, they really are that common, but obviously nothing can be guaranteed. Other predators we might hope to see, um, lions are there in great abundance. Uh, we've got spotted hyenas, wild dogs. And then of course, because there are so many predators, they, they need something to feed on. Um, so there are lots and lots of different antelopes. There's actually 14 different species of antelopes to be found in South Luangwa. Um, we've got the, the greater kudu that you can see here with those magnificent horns. We've got impala, um, puku are also very prevalent in the park. Um, and yeah, so the puku are, are particularly good because often um, that's how we're able to locate some of the leopards and, and other predators through the, the barking alarm call of the puku. And our guides are very well adept in, um, in picking out those alarm calls from the, the antelopes and the birds as well. Some unique species or subspecies that we hope to find here um, are the Thornycroft's giraffe. Um, this subspecies is completely endemic to the Luangwa Valley. There are no captive populations anywhere in the world. Um, there's about 550 remaining in Luangwa, so we, you'll be certainly very uh, likely to see one during your holiday. Um, but if you want to go and see a Thornycroft's giraffe, you're going to have to head to Zambia. Another endemic subspecies is the Cookson's wildebeest, uh, which is an endemic subspecies of blue wildebeest, and we've got very good chances for these. And the Crayshaw zebra, uh, which is a near endemic subspecies of the plains zebra. Um, as you can see here, they've got much thinner stripes than you might find elsewhere in, in other plains zebra. Now it's impossible to talk about South Luangwa without discussing walking safaris. As South Luangwa really is the home of the walking safari. And these were started by pioneering conservationist Norman Carr in the 1950s. Um, it was a time when sort of hunting was much more common um, and he sort of uh, changed that for, for everyone and um, did some amazing work, which, which still goes on today. As you can see here, walking safaris nowadays are not that different. Um, you will head out with your guide in the morning along with an armed scout and um, on the walking safaris you, you're not really looking for sort of the, the big predators and other big ticket items that you might be on the, um, the, the game drives. Instead here you'll be focusing on learning more about the ecosystem, you'll learn about the plants and the insects and how all the wildlife interacts together and it really does give you a much greater appreciation about this incredible ecosystem um, and the other wildlife that, that we'll be focusing on throughout the holiday. It's possible to do walking safaris between a few of the different camps um, if you're particularly interested in walking safaris um, or alternatively you can mix and match with some walking and some game drives. The walking's very easy indeed. As, as I said earlier, it's a very flat landscape across Luangwa, um, so it's certainly not arduous trekking by any means. So I've talked recently a lot about the dry season in South Luangwa, which is when most people will choose to visit. 
Uh, but for birders, it's certainly worth considering visiting during the, the green or emerald season, as it's known in South Luangwa. Um, and this is when we will find some of the best bird life. Um, obviously, at this time, the sort of um, populations are bolstered by the, the northern migrants, but also um, the impressive bleak breeding plumage of the, the existing birds is, is truly incredible. This paradise wider, um, if you'd seen it a couple of months earlier, it would look like a very sort of brown, innocuous looking bird. Um, but here it's got those fantastic tail feathers. Um, I think you'll agree it really is spectacular. Other birds that we might hope to see here are the African Pitta. Um, there are some camps around South Luangra where they are seen quite regularly. Um, so for birders, that's, that's normally a real target. Uh, also some great owling. This is the Vero's eagle owl with the fantastic pink eyelids. Uh, we've got the Pell's fishing owl, which can be seen regularly around a few of the camps. And also in the green season, um, it's one of the very best times to see wild dogs in South Luangra. So a lot of the wild dogs in the park are actually uh, collared um, for, for sort of monitoring purposes, but this means that we know where their dens are. Um, so it can be much easier to see them during the green season than any time other time of year. You'll also see um, well from this photo that the photographic opportunities are amazing. The, uh, the, it's much less hazy than it is during the sort of dustier um, time around the dry season. And it's also very nice to visit um, because you've got sort of the, the carving uh, mammals as well. So it's, it's a lovely time for new life. And um, yeah, it, it, it's a very um, different but, but equally spectacular time of year to visit. So next I will talk about the North Luangwa National Park, which as its name suggests is, is north of the river. Um, this park is much, much more inaccessible than South Luangwa. It sees far fewer visitors and during much of the year it's only accessible by, um, by aircraft, by charter flight. A lot of the um, camps can only be accessed by aircraft and so with that it's only possible to do walking safaris in many of the areas. But with that you do get this real, real sense of exclusivity uh, and a real feeling that you are completely out in the wilds. This is Mualeshi camp, um, which is comprised of only three chalets, so just six people. Um, so perfect for sort of an intrepid family who, who might like to go and visit. Um, and wildlife wise, uh, it's quite similar in a lot of ways to South Luangwa. Um, there are good numbers of buffalo and some different antelope species. Again, uh, this fantastic eland that you can see with the, the lovely carmine in the background. Um, and also bird life. There's some great birds uh, here as well. We'll see some grey crown cranes, the broad bill rollers, uh, and a huge diversity of, of those that can be found in South Wangra as well as in the northern part of the park. So next we will head over to the Lower Zambezi National Park, which as its name suggests, is um, in the lower part of the Zambezi River. So as you can see here, it's um, mainly water-based activities that we'll enjoy here. Um, and actually on the other side of the river, you'll find the Mana Pools National Park in Zimbabwe. So you'll find a very similar habitat, very similar wildlife, and the wildlife is free to sort of roam between the two national parks. So predominantly we'll take out these silent electric motorboats during holidays to the Lower Zambezi. Um, we'll also see lots of elephants and hippos and similar wildlife here. We could also take out some bokoros uh, as a, a different way of, of enjoying the wildlife. So um, wildlife wise, there are um, lots of lots of leopards in this part, uh, this park. Uh, there's also lots of lions um, and many predators. I would say the diversity in the Lower Zambezi is lower um, than in South Luangwa, but what there is, it does have in, in great abundance. So next I will move on to the Kasanka National Park. Um, so this is the location for the world's largest mammal migration. So most people will assume that that would be the great migration in Kenya or Tanzania. But actually it's this fantastic um, migration of uh, the world's entire population of straw coloured fruit bats who literally come in their hundreds of thousands and completely blanket the sky um, with, with black, basically. Um, they will come to an area no more than two kilometres squared um, and, and congregate there. Nobody knows why they do it. Um, but yeah, each November for a period of two weeks, it is this truly incredible wildlife spectacle. 
and with it they do attract um, raptors and, and predators as well so we'll see martial eagles we'll see crowned eagles and other raptor species that could be quite difficult to see elsewhere who are just attracted by this huge concentration of, um, of, of prey. Also in Kasanka, we will look for the Sitatunga antelope. Uh, now this antelope is notoriously shy, and although it can be seen in a few different national parks in Africa, it's by far easier to see in Kasanka than anywhere else. So they are completely uh, swamp dwelling species, completely amphibious. Uh, they've got these splayed hooves to allow them to walk along the water. Um, and that does mean that they're quite clumsy indeed when they are um, on, the, on the land. So they will spend pretty much all of their time in water. In other places, you might hope to see them very occasionally, just one at a time. But in Kasanka, you can see up to sort of 10 or 15, even if you're lucky. Um, so it really is a great place to visit. So we'll then head up to the Bangrulu floodplains. Um, which again is a site where we can hope to see this other magnificent antelope, which is the uh, black lechwe. Um, so this is one of the last remaining strongholds of the black lechwe, who can be seen in their thousands, um, although their numbers are sadly declining. They are another swamp dwelling species. But the main reason that most people will visit the Bangrulu floodplains is to see the shoebill. Now these prehistoric, fantastic looking birds are some of my absolute favourites. And Bangrulu is one of the very blessed place to see them. So between sort of May and September, we'll head out um, on some dugout canoes and hope to see one of these magnificent birds or perhaps even a pair of them if we're very lucky. We'll then move on to the Kafui National Park. Now this is the largest national park in Zambia um, and it, oh, was previously the largest national park in, in Africa. Um, it has now been taken over by the Kruger, but it is absolutely massive. Um, so most people will start on the outskirts of the park, um, at one of these lodges such as Mukambi Safari Lodge, where we'll take a lot of um, water-based safaris again on the river, the Kafui River that runs all the way through it. But primarily, most people who head here will be looking to go to the Busanga Plains, which are really the jewel in the crown of Kafui. So unlike much of Kafui, which is covered in this Miombo woodland, uh, the, the plains of Busanga are these flat, open grasslands. And although the wildlife can be more difficult, certainly to see, than uh, in places like South Luangra, there are very, very few, um, very few camps indeed. So you will find pretty much no other tourists whilst you're there. So it really is this exclusive, fantastic wilderness um, that you'll be experiencing during your time there. It's also one of only two parks in Zambia where you can see cheetah um, and other um, sort of less common antelopes such as sable and rowan antelopes. So next we'll head on to the Liua Plains National Park. Now if I said that Kafui is um, quite remote and uh, difficult to access and there aren't many lodges then Liua Plains is even more extreme than that again. There's only one permanent lodge actually in the park itself and most people choose to access that via um, helicopter so that that shows you how just how remote it is but when you get there it is absolutely worth it for these truly remote wilderness areas that we'll enjoy during our time there. So Liua is the um, site of the second largest uh, wildebeest migration in the world. Uh, they'll come over from Angola sort of every November time at the start of the rains. And Liua is also really well known for uh, its lions. So in the 1990s, lions were poached pretty much to extinction uh, in the park with just one lone lion remaining, who is called Lady Liua. And she survived for many, many years um, pretty completely on her own. But since then, um, other lions have been reintroduced to join Lady Liwa, and she actually established a new pride in the park. Um, and there are a couple of prides there now who are, who are very well established and are doing well. Um, so it really is a conservation success story. There's also some lovely birds um, to be enjoyed there, such as this hot and tot teal. Um, and again, in some of the Miombo woodlands, we've got woodland kingfisher and other woodland specialities. Now, any holiday to Zambia, most people will choose to end at the Victoria Falls and, and certainly for good reason. 
So you might choose to stay at one of these um, sort of uh, quite swanky colonial style hotels such as the Victoria Falls Hotel right in the middle of the Victoria Falls town itself. But most of our guests will prefer to stay somewhere like this. This is Waterbury Lodge on the banks of the Zambezi. It's about half an hour drive from the town um, and it's just so much more remote, so much more tranquil. Uh, guests can enjoy bird walks, bird watching excursions. We can enjoy sunset boat cruises on the Zambezi. Um, and it really is a much more relaxing way to enjoy the Victoria Falls, uh, much more in keeping with uh, what most of our guests will be looking for. So the Victoria Falls themselves, this is a photo from the Zimbabwean side of the falls, um, which pretty much I think everyone would agree is the more um, spectacular side. It's very easy to get a visa to go across to the Zimbabwean side for just a few hours. Um, so, so you can do both sides of the falls in a day. So this is also another photo from the Zimbabwean side, uh, which is taken during the dry season. If this was a wet season, um, it would be almost impossible to see. There would be such a spray, such a cloud of water um, that it, it really is a spectacular place and time of year. It really is a spectacular place, whatever time of year you would like to visit. So that is where my presentation will end. Thank you very much for, for bearing with me through that very whistle stop tour of uh, Zambia. I will end with a nice Zambian sunset there um, before I pass over to Paul, who will be speaking to you about Botswana.